is American Law Sale fan, and before I go into my commentary on the Ruger 556 with the state compliant juggernaut system, I have to clear the air a little bit. As long as I've been a law abiding gun owner for decades, here's my thing. Just me personally, this to me was never a rifle. For me, a rifle looked more like this. <laughs> Just my first AR. Now, in my case, because I live in such a pro-socialist state, I had to contend with the local laws and the state laws. So in a nutshell, that meant one of two things, whether I decided to build one or buy a factory. I was either going to go featureless or I was going to look for some alternative route. Well, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you put it, I got sold with the juggernaut system, especially because it came on a factory Ruger 5.5. So anyway, for those of you not familiar with, this is technically a fixed magazine rifle. So even though I'm pushing on the mag release, it's not going to come out, no matter what. The only way to remove the magazine is not with a bullet button, but by pushing the Juggernaut tactical system, which essentially replaces the rear takedown pin. So I press on here using my thumb. If you notice, it breaks halfway open. And from there, how easy it is, pop the mag. I insert a new mag, and all I have to do, because this weapon is broken, Let's give it a little pat, and it's right back to where it was. So it's a very cool system. Is it perfect? No. I found a big issue with this juggernaut system. You take this thing apart, there's some things you have to be aware of, and they will be a pain in the neck. <laughs> so. I only do this commentary to show anybody who's interested in either in the Juggernaut system or specifically Ruger's uh, 556 uh, with the Juggernaut, there's some things you just need to be aware of. Break the rifle using the Juggernaut, pop the magazine out, okay, if you like, check it one more time. Now, key thing, don't drop the hammer, because if you drop the hammer, you will have a lot of difficulty, if not impossible, pulling this pin out. So the hammer needs to be completely charged. So don't drop that hammer. So think of it as checking a third time and you not touch the trigger. Okay, now we can work This on. piece is pretty easy, just gently unscrew it counterclockwise. Okay, you'll have the cap, put them somewhere safe, like a Tupperware, as well as you will have this spring. Okay, best thing to do is if you don't have a mount, just lay it down and you're gonna push like so, just like you would normally push to release the magazine. Now here's the tricky part. Once again, if you don't have uh, some kind of mount or vise, what you want to do is turn the weapon upside down, like so. Now you'll see on the button it will tell you how to disassemble. So turn one way to pull the pin out, turn the other way to push it back in. But what's important is that you keep pressure on the upper and lower so that they don't separate. Because if you don't, if you don't do that, you'll get a headache. So in this case, you want to turn counterclockwise and then pull it all the way out while keeping pressure on both. And then once you do that, then it opens like more. Okay, so now I've got uh, the upper and lower receiver removed. When you use the juggernaut system and you push on the opposite end, it's gonna bring this pin up into this cutout. And that's going to allow the upper uh, part of the the weapon to break a little bit and that of course allows you to um, break free the magazine. Uh, this, But what you'll see here is that because it's not a solid pin 
there's a big issue is if you don't pull this pin out completely straight when you're disassembling it as well as keeping that pressure on there's a good chance that you could catch this pin midway and then lose it and I'll show you in a second on why it's it's uh, it's just a headache if you if you're not careful basically this pin can get jammed in here to where you cannot pull it out or in and at the same time you have still got your upper and lower receiver connected and it's just like I said it's a big big huge pain and I'll show you why as best I can anyway, there's there's a retaining pin right there that's milled into that groove and if you catch it in between where the brake is you'll notice that all I'd have to do is twist it hard and that pin would lock it into position to where I couldn't get it out and in fact this is making me nervous just doing this but because I've had it happen where basically the pin gets twisted you come right into that brake to where it's halfway in here and like I said the receiver is still locked into position but you can't remove it anymore because it's basically out of alignment now so the only way to basically fix that problem if you have it is of course I'll move the camera a little bit is of course you got to get your um, AR wrench and loosen this part and take this plate back and that's where the pin is it's uh, the spring tension is right here and it lines up to that retaining pin and of course it's really small so be careful when you remove this plate because it could just shoot out and given how small this groove is should give you an idea how uh, I'll just uh, completely uh, easy it would be to lose it. Let's see if I can uh, show you guys one more time. I hate to do this, mostly because I remember how much of a headache it was. So I'm going to move the pin just a little bit like so. Oh, there we go. Now I can see it. Okay, so don't lose it. So that's... Okay, so that's the retaining pin. You can see that little piece right there okay and you can also see is that it's in between the the uh, the break of the pin right there so all it would take is one good hard twist left or right and that spring would shoot out lock the pin in place but you would not be able to get the pin back into the alignment you would not be able to either uh, take apart your weapon, but you wouldn't be able to put it back together either So it's just a big big headache. So big thing is like I explained in the first I'm gonna put this back because Like I said, it it took me a long time to try to figure this out It was just a pain. Anyway, I'm gonna put this back If you notice it's even whoa, <laughs> it's even hard to put back in Anyway Okay, so right now I've got the forward pin assembled. So now I'm ready to put this whole thing back in. Remember, same thing with pulling this pin out, make sure you push it back in the same way. So once again, if you don't have a vise, just lay it on its side and keep pressure on the upper and lower end. And you're just gonna make a good solid push. until it doesn't go anymore okay and then you're going to go ahead and turn the pin oh look at that didn't go all the way through so just pull this out again <laughs> so the pins already out keep the pressure and there we go I think that did it at least I hope it did there it goes. Okay. There, that's another thing that this thing gets used to is you'll... See how it's kind of loose right there? That's because it's in that individual break. So you have to actually push it in. And that's why it's important to keep pressure on here. Because God forbid during this little spot where it's loose like so, 
and you let this open up, it could push it out of alignment. So now that you know it's here, push it all the way through. And then once you've got it all the way through, go ahead and turn it and then push it. So let's do that one more time just so I can show you guys how much of a pain this is. So the pin is already out and I'll do it this way so you can see it. So you're going to push all the way, but there's going to be this spot where it's still a little loose if you notice. So you're going to lift, push a little more, and that's when you're going to turn and complete push. So one more time. So the pin is already out all the way, can't go any further. Push straight in, turn, and then lock it into place. Whoops, see? Yep, I did it. See that? Pin came loose. Okay, you're not going to believe it, but I did it again where the uh, pin came loose and went halfway through and I had to unscrew. Man, it was a pain. Anyway, it was a little easier this time because I've done it before now, but it just shows you how easy you can do that. And obviously I was paying attention to the camera, so I wasn't really looking. Just be, admi just be advised, this thing can be a real pain and so much so that I'm just going to go ahead and put it back on so I don't have to worry about it. Uh, the other biggest thing that people have is what happens when you have to clear a double feed? Because remember, let's say you've got a double feed like this, so bullet fully seated in the chamber and also another bullet halfway in. Well then guess what? You can't can't lock the thing back into position and you're not going to be able to take the magazine out and even if you break it like so now you're doubly screwed because you can't do the charging handle either so juggernaut it actually has a, a series of different um, uh, videos on their Facebook page on how to clear a double feed but it's nothing that you're going to be able to do in a quick hurry obviously Let's say for the sake of argument, this wasn't a juggernaut or it was featureless. So, um, so it would work uh, even way. You'd simply clear the jam, double rack it a couple times, and you're good to go. But in this case, you've got a problem because the gun is either broken or it's locked into position. Either way, you're not going to be able to clear a jam, not without kind of taking this apart and reworking it. Okay, so what's my final thoughts about this um, and the Juggernaut system as a whole? Let me break down real simple. If you're looking to purchase this thing as just a fun gun to take to the range, I think it's perfect. Any malfunctions you might have can be dealt with safely at the range and with the proper tools and time. Um, and any of the issues that I addressed with taking it apart, hopefully you've just been aware of that and you just need to be extra careful. However, if you have any um, need for this to either serve a defensive purpose or even a competitive purpose, I think there's a lot of issues with it. And it's too bad because I think the idea was quite ingenious, but unfortunately, it just filled a lot of holes. Uh, the best thing would, of course, be that all states and our federal government would just stop, you know, uh, infringing on our, on our Second Amendment right. But anyway, that's all I got. God bless you, those you love.